Hare Krishna, dear devotees. My humble obeisance to you all. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, thank you all for joining His Holiness Chandramoli Swami Maharaj's daily class. Um, I welcome everyone. Today we are uh, we are very fortunate to have her uh, His Grace Kanchanamcha Prabhuji uh, to enlighten us on the topic of Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter thirteen, verse number seventeen. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Shri Prabhupada and uh, all glories to Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, uh, Prabhuji. Uh, it's been a long time. We didn't hear from you. So I'm so excited to have you on the call and um, eager to listen to your class. Uh, Prabhuji, you can please take over. I'll share my screen. Hare Krishna, Srimati Mataji. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Maharaj. It's so nice to be with everyone. Um, it's a good day and a bad day for us because we've had so much fun with Maharaj here. And today he's leaving <laughs> London um, and he's going to Croatia. So it's been really nice to have Maharaj's association. And today we are feeling a bit of, yeah, a bit of, uh, I, I, wish, I wish I could feel separation, but definitely missing Maharaj already. Um, so yes, Hare Krishna. So we are on... Um, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Text Number 17. Um, okay, so I'll just read the Sanskrit, the translation, the purple, and then we'll discuss it. Is that okay, Mataji? Yeah, okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Evam Griheshu Saktanam Pramatanam Tadihaya Atyakramad Avigyata Kala Paramadustaraha Translation Insurmountable, eternal time imperceptibly overcomes those who are too much attached to family affairs and are always engrossed in their thought. Purport. It's a slightly long purport, so please be patient. I am now happy. I have everything in order. My bank balance is quite enough. I can now give my children enough estate. I am now successful. The poor beggar sannyasis depend on God, but they come, but they come be to beg from me. Therefore, I am more than the supreme God. These are some of the thoughts which engross the insanely attached householder who is blind to the passing of eternal time. Our duration of life is measured and no one is able to enhance it even by a second against the scheduled time ordained by the supreme will. Such valuable time, especially for the human being, should be cautiously spent because even a second passed away imperceptibly cannot be replaced. Even in exchange for thousands of gold coins amassed by hard labor. Every second of human life is meant for making an ultimate solution to the problems of life, i.e., repetition of birth and death, and revolving in the cycle of 8.4 million different species of life. The material body, which is subject to birth and death, diseases and old age, is the cause of all suffering of the living being. Otherwise, the living being is eternal. He is never born, nor does he ever die. Foolish persons forget this problem. They do not know at all how to solve the problems of life, but become engrossed in temporary family affairs, not knowing that eternal time is passing away imperceptibly and that their measured duration of life is diminishing every second without any solution to the big problem, namely, repetition of birth and death, disease and old age. This is called illusion. By such illusion, sorry, but such illusion cannot work on one who is awake in the devotional service of the Lord. Yudhishthir Maharaj and his brothers, the Pandavas, were all engaged in the service of the Lord Sri Krishna and they had very little attraction for the illusory happiness of the material world. As we have discussed previously, Maharaj Yudhishthir was fixed in the service of the Lord Mukunda, the Lord who can award salvation, 
and therefore he had no attraction even for such comforts of life as are available in the kingdom of heaven because even the happiness obtained on the planet Brahmaloka is also temporary and illusory. Because the living being is eternal, he can be happy only in the eternal abode of the kingdom of God, Paravyama, from which no one returns to this region of repeated birth and death, disease and old age. Therefore, any comfort of life or any material happiness which does not warrant in eternal life is but illusion for the eternal living being. One who understands this factually is learned, and such a learned person can sacrifice any amount of material happiness to achieve the desired goal known as Brahma Sukham or absolute happiness. Real transcendentalists are hungry for this happiness, and as a hungry man cannot be made happy by all comforts of life minus foodstuff. So the man hungry for eternal absolute happiness cannot be satisfied by any amount of material happiness. Therefore, the instruction described in this verse cannot be applied to Mara Yudhishthir or his brothers and mother. It was meant for persons like Dhritarashtra, for whom Vidura came especially to impart lessons. Om Gyanti Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasme Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagrajataham Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padahan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Scha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Panamami Hari Priye Manchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivash Adigaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So thank you everybody for tuning in today for this text and thank you again for inviting me to speak something um, on Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Srimati Mataji. Um, so here we are in this 13th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Vidura has just come back um, from his pilgrimage. He's been gone for a long, long time. He's been having lots of talks with Maitreya Rishi, um, which which we'll come to in the uh, next uh, next cantos of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, and when he when he comes back, he's come back for this sole purpose, this one and only purpose, which is um, to bring to, to bring Dhritarashtra out of his illusion. Uh, Vidura was insulted by Duryodhan. Vidura was told basically to go out to get out of the kingdom, and Vidura left. Um, he didn't want to. He couldn't watch this battle of Kurukshetra. He couldn't see Dhritarashtra just make an absolute fool of himself so he left um, and he went to he went for pilgrimage and and then he came back because he felt that actually he's my brother actually he vidura's heart was full of compassion full of love uh, and because his heart was full of compassion and full of love he came back to save dhritarashtra from this massive illusion he was in what was this illusion well like it says in this verse um, insurmountable eternal time imperceptibly overcomes those who are too much attached to family affairs 
and are always engrossed in their thought. So this is the this was the plight of Dhritarashtra, even after losing his hundred sons, even after being totally embarrassed um, by the Pandavas, he still wanted to stay within the kingdom. And somehow or the other, in his big illusion, he felt like he was doing Yudhishthira a favor. He felt like, oh, because you know, Yudhishthira, they ask my advice, you know, when I when when uh, when it comes to uh, kingly matters or monarchy matters they come to ask his advice so because they because of this illusion that Dhritarashtra was in he became attached to staying in the kingdom he was attached to um, eating nice rich foods attached to having servants around him attached to a palace attached to all the uh, material comforts that the world could offer him at the same time, Dhritarashtra's body is dwindling, his liver is, is, is pretty much packed in, he's coughing up mucus and blood, his teeth are falling off, um, which Vidura will say to him very directly in the next few texts, so you will be hearing that in the next few days. Um, and, and because Vidura is, is so compassionate to his brother, he wants to get Dhritarashtra out of this illusion. He wants to get Dhritarashtra out of this illusion. Don't that this this attachment to family affairs, always engrossed in the thought of the 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 the, the home and the family, is is going to be um, is going to be very difficult for such a person to access eternality, to see the bigger picture, to see to see the world in the vision of eternality. So the 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 the, the, the devotee, the Vaishnava, the pure devotee. They opened up our darkened eyes. You know, they 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 let us see um, beyond the ignorance that we're stuck in. So so Vidura is taking this role um, for Dhritarashtra out of pure love, out of pure compassion. He couldn't bear to see that this is the plight of his of his elder brother, that he's still carrying on there. He's still carrying on, and in one sense, he's just faffing around. What's he doing in that kingdom? His body is about to pack in. His body is about to pack in. His body is, is, is basically saying it's all over, but he's just hanging on, hanging on. How much more sense gratification? How much more nice, rich foodstuffs can I taste? So in this way, um, in this way, Vidura is, um, is entering the kingdom. And as we've heard in the previous days, Vidura enters the kingdom. He's very um, cordial with Yudhishthir and the Pandavas, and he's very happy to come back. He's sharing these nice, um, uh, nice realizations that he had after speaking with Maitreya Rishi. He kind of uh, dodged the topic about Krishna um, and the Yadus because he he had a mission, and his mission was Dhritarashtra, and he didn't want, to, and he knew that. Um, sooner or later that the Pandavas would find out about what happened to the Yadus and what happened to Krishna. So, so Vidura has come here um, and he goes, to, he goes to Dhritarashtra and he sees Dhritarashtra um, suffering. He sees Dhritarashtra and I don't want to say too much about what actually happens in the conversation because that's what's going to happen in the next few days or in the next few texts. But when he goes, when he gets into that conversation straight away, He's he's he he he's at it. He's at it with Dhritarashtra. He's saying to Dhritarashtra, look, pretty much, you know. <clears throat> so Dhritarashtra offers him any food, and Vidura is like, no, I'm only going to take fruits. I've been away for you know like thirty years. Um, I can't eat this rich food stuffs anymore. And in the mean in the meantime, Dhritarashtra is like really suffering because he can't he can't stop eating um, food that's bad for him. Um, and and Srila Prabhupada in the purport is speaking about, um, and over and over again, he's speaking about this whole concept of um, what we're doing with our time. What are we doing with our time? Dhritarashtra is still using time to enjoy himself. He's still using it after all that's happened, after all the difficulties, after all the loss, after all the pain, after all the suffering. What happened? Dhritarashtra still finds a way to try and enjoy the material world. And sometimes um, we can see that we also do the same thing. Sometimes we go through a difficulty. And while we are going through that difficulty, we're thinking, okay, this is it. I've got to, I've got to get serious now. 
I've got to stop this now. I'm going to put my foot on the gas with my spiritual life. And then, and then what? We'll, uh, because the difficulty is so strong. Maybe generally, like when we get bad health, um, when something happens to our health, we start really, we really start to to introspect, to really see see things differently. But then, as soon as our health starts to get slightly better, we forget how serious we need to be in our see in in our spiritual life. We forget how how important it is to take spiritual life seriously. Um, Spiritual life can only be taken seriously if the intention within the heart is very sincere. So a lot of the time, we may find ourselves thinking that, oh, look, I'm spending all my time doing service. I'm spending all my time doing service. But yet, we're still, um, we're still not feeling happy. We're still not feeling satisfied. We're still not feeling content, um, even though all our hours are spent in service. So if this is a, if this is happening, then we can understand that something within the intention is lacking. Some sincerity within the intention is lacking. Because whenever we are sincere, whenever we are sincere, then Krishna reciprocates with that sincerity. As he says in the Bhagavad Gita, in uh, chapter 4, text 11, that he reciprocates with one according to the surrender to him. Yeah. So as one surrenders unto him, I reciprocate. As one surrenders unto me, I reciprocate accordingly. So that sincerity is what Krishna is after. That's what, that's what satisfies Krishna more than anything. More than the quantity of hours of service, it's the quality of the devotion in the heart that will satisfy Krishna. And if our time, if our time is spent with, with, a, with an inner desire to serve the Lord, with sincerity, with love, then that is the best use of our time. That is the best use of our time. Uh, Prabhupada says here, every second of human life is meant for making an ultimate solution to the problems of life, i.e. repetition of birth and death. The repetition of, Prabhupada mentions repetition of birth and death a few times. He mentions the fact, the reason we're suffering is because we have this material body. So, so sometimes we're like, why am I suffering so much? But the reason we're suffering so much is because we have a body. <laughs> That's it. You have a body. And you can't do anything about that right now, apart from the fact you have a body. So what we do is we invest. We invest in the future. Just like when we have, um, when we earn some Lakshmi, we may invest in some sort of bond or some shares or some sort of business. And with that investment, what are we hoping what are we hoping for what we're hoping for is a future return a return in the future some sort of um, repayment in the future so this is this is what we do we have been given this material body which is bound to suffer it's it's, it's bound to it's bound to go through difficulty it's just it's just symptomatic of being in this world in this body is that we are going to suffer but what we do with our time here is we invest in the future we invest in our spiritual progress because that is what will benefit us when we, um, when we grow older in this life, naturally as the years go on, um, as we go into our next life, um, hopefully that's with Krishna and the spiritual world, and actually also even for the present moment. Because when we, when we spend our time wholeheartedly engaged, wholeheartedly engaged, in our spiritual life. And, and wholeheartedly me engaged in our spiritual life actually is, is about being conscious about what we are doing. Being conscious. Because when we are conscious about what we are doing, then actually we, 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 we begin to um, we begin to feel, we begin to ex embrace, we begin to embrace the beauty of Krishna consciousness. Sometimes what happens, we're here, there and everywhere. We want to do too many things at the same time. I remember some years back when I went for, uh, when, when I, went, I went to the temple one day and I went, I went, um, I was doing service actually that day. I had some, I was doing some, some, um, some DT service. And I remember I, I, I did the service and it was like a 3.30 in the morning. And then, you know, it was like the, it was just preparing Krishna's plates in the morning. And then I came out of the temple room 
Um, I think it was around 4.15 or 4.20, something like that. And then I was chanting. And I was chanting my rounds. And then I heard that the curtains opened. So then I, I was still chanting in my hand with my bead bag. And I heard the curtains open. So I thought, okay, I should go in and take darshan. So I'm chanting. I walked in. I took darshan. I, so I paid the basins. I got up and I took darshan. And at the same time, I was chanting. And then I came out and I just thought to myself, nothing really happened there. And why nothing happened there? It's because I'm chanting, I'm paying obeisances and then taking darshan pretty much all simultaneously. So I wasn't really focusing on the chanting. When I was paying obeisances, the bead bag was there. So it was kind of like hard to manage the bead bag and paying obeisances at the same time. And then when I was taking darshan, I thought I better finish my round because I've got to get back into the into the DT kitchen to do the service and so I didn't even see Krishna properly and then I was just thinking to myself actually if I if I just did one of those things nicely just like finished my round nicely and then pay obeisances wholeheartedly and then take darshan lovingly wouldn't that have been better but what we do sometimes is we're trying to do everything at the same time mode of passion just here, there, and everywhere. And when we do this here, there, and everywhere, we're thinking we're spending our time valuably. But what happens is that actually we spend that time um, not really benefiting from the opportunity in front of us. So it's better to just take a moment and think, okay, how should I navigate this situation? I've got to finish my round. The curtains have opened. I want to pay obeisances. I want to take darshan. There's a devotee there I want to speak to. Well, the way to do this nicely is just do things one by one with focus, with attention. So everything, in, everything in our life, if we do it with attention, we get a lot out of it. So if we chant the holy name with attention, you know, without without the without the phone near us. It's the biggest, the biggest problem um, in Kali Yuga when it comes to chanting the holy name is just having a smartphone, I think. <laughs> Maybe some of you agree. Um, that's one big issue when it comes to chanting. When it comes to hearing, hearing a class, it's just, um, can we, can we have, do we have rapt attention when it's reading? So when we're reading, can we just spend a few minutes just really reading? Um, the other day, I was at the I was at the Soho Street Temple, and it was it was the evening it was evening time, and it was around six thirty six forty, just before Gora Arti, and and I had my kids with me, and they were just faffing around. They were just like you know, this being restless little children. They were being restless. My wife was chanting, and then I thought to myself, okay, I need to do something because I'm getting I was feeling restless myself. So then I picked up a book and it was Nectar of Devotion and I just started reading and I read it for about 20 minutes until Gora Arti and I just felt so grounded, so peaceful, so calm. I just didn't think of anything. I just for those 20 minutes, I was just reading. And, and I was just thinking then that actually, if I just read without distraction, how amazing is that reading? And, and one big problem I used to have, well, no, actually, I still have, but I used to be annoyed that I had, was that I can never remember anything I read. Like, I have a really bad memory. Like, my memory is just, I think I took too many drugs when I was younger, um, before I came into Krishna consciousness. So I, my, my, my brain has just got nothing in there. It's just like, boop, in, out, in, out, nothing's in. But actually, Shravanam, hearing which which reading is reading it also con is is part of our shravanam is so purifying it's just so purifying so even though right now i cannot remember what i read I, what i do remember is that feeling of being with krishna for those 20 minutes just really feeling i was with krishna when the curtains opened i felt i was with krishna because i did i did some reading before the curtains opened that it was just last friday evening um, when we went there so so th this this concept of paying attention focusing our time valuably means pay attention to the service that we are doing it's not just about oh okay it says we need to spend we need to make sure that we are using this human life um, using every second in this human life um, in, in, a, in a useful way means I just need to keep doing service. Yes, we need to keep doing service. Of course we do. Service is what, is, is, is what uh, attracts Krishna. But, that, but when we're doing the service, always be in tune. We can always be in tune with 
paying attention and devotionally with our heart performing that service. Devotionally with that heart. If we spend the time in our service gossiping with other devotees, um, then that's not actually a good use of our time. You know, if we if we spend that if we spend that time criticizing the management of the temple um, about them, do, they did it like this, and they're doing things like this, and they're doing things like that, and they're doing things like this, and this and that. Then actually, what what what? Then we come home and we're not feeling satisfied, even though what you've just done is like three hours of devotional service. But we spent those that valuable time with such a wonderful activity but with degraded consciousness. And then what happens? Because of the, the degraded consciousness, the activity itself doesn't yield us that satisfaction and that contentment in the heart. And if you think of it the other way, if we are in really good consciousness, the most simplest thing that we do will get so much reciprocation from Krishna. Even if we're in really good consciousness and we chant one round, wow. If we're in good consciousness and we read for 10 minutes, wow. But if we're in if we're in if we're in a lower consciousness, if we're if we're if we're being attacked by the mode of passion and ignorance, or if we're being um, dominated by the modes of passion and ignorance, then no matter what we're doing, no matter what we're doing, we won't we won't be um, we won't be crossing the ocean of birth and death, or this or getting out of this material body. So. Uh, Prabhupada then goes on to speak about the in in the purple about being um, being too. He says, therefore, any comfort of life or any material happiness which does not warrant an eternal life is but illusion for the eternal living being. That we we shouldn't spend too much of our life, our time here, trying to get too comfortable, trying to achieve material happiness. We need comfort for the sake of living. But we don't need we don't need to over endeavor for material happiness. We don't need to over endeavor for comfort. If if material happiness, if material, let's say wealth, if we inherit some wealth, we're not going to say no. Okay, great, thank you, Krishna. But if we if we spend fourteen hours a day trying to earn wealth, thinking that's what's going to give me comfort, that's what's going to give me that's what's going to bring me happiness, then that's wasting time. Then that is wasting time. So, so real the real use of our time is yes to engage ourselves in 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 the service of the Lord to engage ourselves in remembering the Lord um, to to arrange our life in such a way that that we can perform devotional service. How can we arrange our life in such a way? Um, we can arrange our life in such a way. Well, first thing we could say is get to know ourselves. What do we like doing? And what are we good at doing? Do the things we like doing. Do the things we're good at doing. Because these, when we are doing things that are in line with our nature, we will feel some sense of inner alignment. And when we have that sense of inner alignment, when we go and perform devotional service, when we go for Mangalarti, when we go for Guru Puja, when we go for Srimad Bhagavatam class, when we go to associate with devotees, we are getting the most out of it. Because we are, we are internally um, aligned and satisfied. If we if we if we are if our day job is completely against our nature, then we're always going to be feeling um, un, feeling unsatisfied. We're going to be feeling very uh, very disturbed in the mind. And if we're feeling disturbed in the mind, we're making it difficult for ourselves to practice our Krishna consciousness. So instead of wasting time, um, instead of wasting time worrying about what people think of us. Isn't this such a big problem? What do they think of me? <laughs> you know, we spend so much time worrying. Actually, I should do, I should, I should go to the temple so that they think I'm a good devotee. So you go to the temple so they think you're a good devotee and you neglected your service, which is actually you had to, um, if it's Namrata Mataji, she had to finish her painting. <laughs> you know, um, we, and Maharaj is waiting for the painting um, for his new book. Um, but no, but they, they're going to think I'm not a good devotee, so I'll go to the temple. No, actually, uh, our heart, our heart needs to be, our heart needs to be fully aligned, fully aligned to being true to ourselves, being true to ourselves. If we waste our time worrying about what people think of us, if we waste our time worrying about people think of us, and then act in ways. So with our time, 
we we spend our time doing things just so other people think <laughs> we're a good devotee or we're not a bad devotee or that he's a good dad or he's a bad mom or he's a good mom or she's she's a good mom or whatever if we're just acting in diff if we're acting if we're spending our time in different ways trying to um trying to just hope that someone thinks good about us that's the biggest waste of time because firstly we can't control the thoughts of others we can't even control our own thoughts so how are we going to control the thoughts of anyone else best to be true to ourselves and best to be very sincere and practice our krishna consciousness with attention and devotion so there are some thoughts um and if we hopefully hopefully if we have a vidura in our life a real a good a good friend um a good friend vidura was being a very good friend to ditarashtra here a good friend who can who can uh, who can help pull us out of our illusion when we need to then that is the best thing we can hope for so invest in friendships with devotees who will um who will not be shy to tell us that we need to we need to uh, come out of our illusion from time to time so thank you very much uh, for your attention um and if anyone has any comments questions corrections it will be very nice to hear from the devotees hare krishna hare krishna prabhu ji thank you so much uh, for such a wonderful class thank you so much so many points important yeah um i, I liked very much the realization which you shared um, about um uh, in the temple how you were uh, chanting at the same time and taking darshan so yeah sometimes i also do that <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing that It just even i was thinking even me to uh, how to complete when i was entering into the temple i was in the middle of chanting and um, so without paying obeisances there um, and without finishing my chanting on the round how to balance that i didn't understand i did <laughs> that one so yeah i was uh, yeah i was laughing when you were uh, mentioning I'm, about I'm, that because good, i'm not I'm good i'm not alone so <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you dear devotees any questions or comments uh, realizations you want to share please go ahead and uh, please turn on your cameras if possible thank you so much um so um prabhuji um before anyone asks uh, um so you said like we have a vidura in our lives uh, i didn't exactly get uh, the point uh, can you please elaborate on that sorry yeah um thank you much i just meant if we have a good friend um a good friend in our life who can okay. um who can help us mm. uh, who can understand when we're in illusion when we're getting too entangled in maya and that can say hey kanchan abja um stop watching movies uh, hey kanchan abja stop watching football um uh, you're getting too attached um so if we have a friend who can help us like this then then actually our spiritual life is very much protected yeah yes prabhuji thank you so yes that's very true but um, the thing is prabhuji i feel like um, we should be always ready to get a feedback um mm. so how to um, i just want to know your experience like how to um, be ready for the feedbacks like uh, constructive feedbacks or any bad feedback also we have to be open for that right we we don't really want to hear anything um, like that so one has to be um, uh, prepared i feel like like we should be mentally prepared to take any feedback mm. what do you mm. think um, prabhuji yeah i think that's a nice nice point mataji in terms of accepting feedback i think one thing is is that the bhagavad gita is is a really amazing is an amazing conversation on in a battlefield and ultimately that battlefield became a classroom and 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 in one sense arjuna got so much learning in the on the battlefield so we're on the we're in the battlefield of life we have a many we have many different difficulties challenges and our main challenge is generally going to be other people other human beings because they also 
um, they also have a mind and it's also the age of Kali, which is quarrel and hypocrisy. So if we are if we are in the mood of Arjuna, which is that this 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 world is a classroom, that this battlefield is a classroom, then actually, and I and I asked Maharaj this, I asked Chandramouli Maharaj this um, about when someone says something to us or when someone criticizes, then Maharaj said, try and see what you can learn from this. See what can we learn? Like if we just try and when someone gives us this feedback, just the ego hurts. <laughs> You know, it's like, oh my God, and it's like a straight jolt. And rather than just reacting, just just accept it, just try and tolerate it for a while. We don't have to react straight away. Try and ground ourselves. You know, just, you can call upon the earth element, which Krishna has given us. You know, we're made of earth, water, air, air, fire, ether. So ground ourselves, accept, um, accept that this person might be telling, Krishna might be telling me something through this person, which I can learn from. Um, because there's always a point to learn and even if that person is not right we're convinced that that person is not right at least we can learn about ourselves how did I react when that person said it how did I feel in my heart when that person said it what triggered me inside so there's always something we can learn whether it's something that that person has said or whether we or whether we're learning about ourselves in the way we responded um, to that person giving us the feedback. Yes, Prabhuji. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely a uh, nice point. We have to practice that, always constantly reminding ourselves about that. Yes. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. Namrita Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Is it all glories to your wonderful service. Um, my thank you. All glories to Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj, all glories to you, Mataji. It's really nice artwork in that new book. Thank you. That is Guru Maharaj's mercy. <laughs> and Krishna's opportunity. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and your talent. So, yeah. <laughs> Little bit, not more. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so uh, you mentioned about focus. Uh, so yes, uh, this is one of very important uh, important thing where, where at least people of Kaluga are lacking. So um, when I, I don't know, I'm asking a right person or not. But since you have mentioned the point, I I want to ask this question that uh, when when it comes to women they are uh, almost like uh, forced to multitask you know their their routine are somehow uh, you know designed in a way that they have to multitask which i think uh, quite is not in line with exactly what we uh, talk about focus so um, how should a, a woman consider this point of, of focus? <laughs> you know, so. Rigo. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it's Sukal sorry, Mataji but, now. Uh, she's she's, 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 she's making like... prashadam. She's hearing class. She's, you know, this you, multitasking. Sukawa Mataji must be the one to speak to. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think, I think, I think one thing, one thing in my own realization is that women are better at multitasking than men. You know, it's for me, it's just, it's just like too much. It's just, I can't, it's just, and, and I'm better when I just compartmentalize my life. Okay. Now I'm at work. Now I'm, it's, you know, it's just it's put things into different compartments, but I understand um, that the, the Dharma of a, of a Mataji may be slightly different um, in terms of having to get everything done. But what I would say, what I would say, maybe because because we have different abilities in terms of multitasking, what I would say is that when we're doing our duties, maybe we can multitask and we've got the capacity within us and we can multitask because we have the ability and everyone has different ability um, with everything, including multitasking. But what we meant by focus and attention is when we're practicing our devotional service, then that, so for example, when we're chanting Hare Krishna, we don't need to multitask. 
um, it, it, we should be chanting Hare Krishna. When we are when we are doing RT, we don't need to multitask. We don't need to do RT and at the same time um, do anything else, whatever it is. So I think when we're performing our devotion, the, the point we were trying to make is when we're performing our devotional service, try and have focus and attention at those times because what happens is we we give ourselves like for example chanting we've we've allocated two hours in our day to chanting 16 rounds so those two hours you're going to spend chanting now what we're trying to what we were trying to say is that if in those two hours that we spend chanting if we do other things during that time then what we're doing is we're taking, we're actually um, diluting the chanting. So when we are performing our devotional service, we do that with attention because when we do that with attention, that's actually our way of expressing devotion to Krishna. It's our, it's our way of expressing devotion because we're saying this time is just for you. I'm focusing this attention on you. When I'm chanting, it's just I'm just with you. And the more we perform our devotional service with that attention, one-to-one -one attention with Krishna, then we'll feel the reciprocation more and more and more. And then maybe when you're doing your other duties, Krishna will give you the, the wisdom, the magic, the, 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 the shakti to perform all these multitasking times in, in however many minutes we need to get things done. Maybe you need to make something for your son and you know pack his lunch for school and get your husband's things ready for work and you also have to leave to go somewhere. All these things we may be able to do because we've spent that time. Um, there's a nice thing I heard recently by Keshav Maharaj. If we join the 5 a.m. club, which is if we're if we're up early, we're chanting our if we're chanting our rounds and we're sp we're spending our time studying. Then when we have to join, if we join the five a.m. club, then when we're at the nine a.m. club, we do that. We we can do the nine a.m. club with a better vision. But if we just in the nine a.m. club, we miss the five a.m. club. You know, we miss that morning hours of spiritual enlightenment, spiritual connection, and we go straight in. Then everything's everywhere. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. And everything's everywhere, and we're all over the place, and and <laughs> and the day just does, and the day just feels like a big, big challenge. So there are some thoughts, but I'm sure the maybe the other Matajis may be able to help with that <laughs> a bit more than me. Hare Krishna. Thank you, uh, but but I I really feel that you know. Um, if we are multitasking, then we are, it, it may be anything, not just standing, not just devotional service, it may be anything. Uh, we are dividing our focus. And, you know, uh, if we are um, doing anything with that focus, then it would be a different outcome. So mm. for me, I mean, um, I don't have a good views over multitasking, although uh, we do it in our daily life a lot. But somewhere I feel that multitasking it is the division of focus, which is yeah. you know which is the main cause, uh, which we have been carrying out for maybe not years long, but maybe <laughs> in previous lives as well, for which we are not getting uh, you know we are not able to overcome it. Mm. So then, so then, so then, if if multitasking you, if you yourself, if you don't, if we're not finding that we're getting much satisfaction from getting things done in that way, then the real the real thing is then when you're doing something, just do it. Like my daughter, when I'm playing with her, my younger daughter, she's <coughs> six. Whenever I'm playing with her, the first thing she says to me is, "Papa, no devices." She makes sure my phone is no way near. So that I'm with her. Because she knows if I'm with her and my phone's near me, I'll be like, yeah, 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 your turn. Ti, 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 ti. When it's hurt, you know, then it's like, oh, you're back. And she just realizes that there's no attention. There's no real focus. So if I'm with my daughter, it's straight away, Papa, no devices. You know, I'm not allowed to have my device near me when, um, when I'm with. And it's the same because when I come home from work and if they found my wife's phone or something and they're on a device, the first thing I say is, why are you on a device? You know, your attention won't be in the right place. So, um, yeah, I think I think when we when we when we do everything we do in life, when we put focus into that actual thing, that's when we really get the results. Like even if you think in mundane terms, like an athlete, an athlete focuses on the sport so much 
that they don't get distracted. They don't they 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 eat the right food, they drink the right drinks, they sleep at the right time, they wake up at the right time, they train at the right time, everything is focused, and then they get a result, they become professional athletes. So if we want to become um spirit if we want to spiritualize this material body and material mind then yeah we need to put a lot of focus and attention yeah thank you very much for shedding the light um uh, but yeah um i i always get confused over this question that multitasking should be done or should not be done <laughs> because I, I myself prefer focusing a lot but then you know we are forced to multitask so yeah. that is one I, question I, I, think, I, think one, I think one thing with this Mataji is that ought to be what should be done and not to be and maybe it's a gray area but one thing definitely we can do is we know ourselves very we can get to know ourselves very well and we can get to know do I function well multitasking or do I not function well multitasking and then the answer can be very personal for you. And if you yourself think, actually, I don't function very well multitasking, then I should arrange my life in such a way that I'm focusing on every activity I do. You know, and then that becomes the answer for you. And for someone else, the answer may be different because they are, you know, they're just on a different wavelength. I, I know one devotee, a very senior devotee, he can, he can, he can multitask. He can, he can, he can be preparing for a class. He can be doing something on his, he's like, he's just like his brain's everywhere. Um, and and he can do different things, but he's got the capacity, so he can. Um, so we have to ask ourselves what 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 works for me, and then focus on what works for us. Yeah, I think uh, that is the answer. <laughs> yeah, it, it it sometimes becomes personal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very thank you, thank the you consciousness very is very personal. So thank you, yeah. Martin. <laughs> very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much for such a nice question, Mataji. Um, Sukhava, Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. First of all, Prabhuji, for a lovely class. I really, really appreciate your class because they are so practical. <laughs> you give all the practical tips and I really, really like them. Uh, focus, and, and Namrata Mataji's question on focusing, uh, you mentioned very very clearly that certain things are need our focus but certain things we are so used to as a woman we are multitasking <laughs> as you see i'm just preparing prashad and at the same time i'm talking to you as well but um at that time my attention is more on the class like my focus is more on the class rather than this physical activities so I do multitasking when my physical activities does not take away my focus. Mm. If it does mm. help you, you know, that physical activities can be done, but the mental focus is not, not moving to that particular area, then I do multitasking. Otherwise, definitely chanting or when we are in the temple room or I'm reading, I can't multitask, definitely no mm. way. And especially, uh, as you mentioned, when we are with the family or we have to we are with some devotees where the discussion should be proper. I would not do any other other physical activities just to you know make that uh, opposite person feel that I'm not diverting my attention as well. Because sometimes you know when you are talking to somebody and that person is doing something else, then you feel yeah. does that person paying attention to me yeah. or his, his or her attention is there something what they are doing it. So yeah, it is very personal and it is very circumstantial as well that when you can do multitasking and when you can't. And I'm sure like everyone knows that practicality of like multitasking or not multitasking. Also about the Lavanya Mataji's question for the feedback, which was quite good as well. Like, you know, uh, except I, I, I believe in constructive feedback. I do not believe in the bad feedback because so many times uh people just wants to give feedback because they want to show their authority mm. which is so bad <laughs> you know i i would uh like we discussed yesterday's class mataji if you remember when Nabrata mataji's class after that we had a discussion that you know all the time giving feedback is uh the person who is giving feedback should think about what they are they want actually from the person who they are giving the feedback basically not just to blame the blaming culture should not be there 
and uh, Ansi Amitaji made a really good point that uh, when we give when we give and we get constructive feedback, it is better because it is the room to improvement and can be understood by the person who we are giving the feedback that okay, this is the way we can improve rather than just telling oh this is wrong way done. So I, I think these two points I just wanted to discuss and highlight that it should be done this way. And if it is not, and if it is making you feel that that feedback is not good for you and you're feeling stressed about it, Mataji, by all means, you can raise the point to that person and say that, look, this, is make, this situation is making me feel in that way, but like Kansuya Mataji mentioned. I hope it will help you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you for your wonderful points. I really like them. That um, some things that some things we can multitask and some can't depend. And I like what you said, where your mental focus is and what your physical activity is. And it's a good point because when you just said that about you know you're making the prashadam, but at the same time your main energy is in listening to classes because when you're you know what you're doing, you seem like you know you're cutting without having to look. And you know I'm just thinking, is she going to cut her finger? But you're not because you've been doing this for years. You know where you know where everything is. Um, and I was just thinking it's true because when I, I generally do listen to class when I'm driving, so my mental yeah. focus is mainly on the class, but because I because I'm dry I know how to drive, it's kind of like it's okay. Obviously, we need to put we need to focus on driving as well. But because we because we're quite accustomed to it, we can in one sense make use of that time nicely. Otherwise the driving mm -hmm. becomes a bit boring. <laughs> so <laughs> or, I, or I do that or I do like if I have to catch up with any devotees or anything, I just generally do the the, the calls on the on the road. Um hands free of course, Hare Krishna. Um, yes. so, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's purified by good... consciousness as well, Prabhuji. Like you know, I, I always listen to kids in all class when I'm doing uh, at least cooking because yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Time it says that the, our consciousness goes into the grain into the, into the food. Yeah, and I don't yeah. want to be thinking about my work. Exactly. No, exactly. You know, it's not even when my wife, when 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 you know, when, when I hear Madhava's kirtan, I know she's cooking. So I'll get happy first with the kirtan and soon because I know Prashadam is coming. You know. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then if she's cooking, I'm always telling the kids don't disturb mommy because then if mommy gets annoyed, then her annoyance is going to go into the prashadam. So I keep the kids away, <laughs> you know, because like you said, that consciousness goes in. <laughs> so don't go. <laughs> leave, leave her to it. Otherwise, <laughs> and our mind can't be empty any time, you know. If you're exactly. thinking that there are loads of things going on in your mind, and if yeah. we don't get somewhere nicely. Then that yeah, concept then it goes everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So thank, thank you for that point. And also, I really liked your point about the feedback. That, um, yeah. I, so I think last time when Srimati Mati was asking, she was talking about receiving feedback, and you're speaking about giving the feedback. And it's really important that when we give feedback, we we know what our intention is when we're giving someone else feedback. Um, it can't just be we can't be giving others feedback just to just we you know just for our own pride our own ego i want to show them i know better than them i know something they don't because that intention doesn't really please krishna and we're, we're in the business of trying to make krishna happy we're trying to please krishna that's what we're here for um so if our intention is to help the other person grow in their krishna consciousness and we're doing it from a sincere place also as krishna says in the bhagavad gita austerity of speech is you know saying the truth in a beneficial and pleasing way. We should still say it, even if it's something that's difficult, um, say it in a beneficial and pleasing way. So, you know, like even modern, modern, um, the corporate modern world even has something called the feedback sandwich, where you say something really good, and then you and then and then in the middle you say the thing they need to improve, and then again you say something really good about them. So that way it's like the sandwich, the good thing, the improvement, and then the good thing. Um, and that way, when you're giving the feedback. Um, that feedback sandwich, as they call it, when you're giving the feedback, it can be taken nicely, and we've also said it in the right mood and the right consciousness. And you know, when we do give feedback, people pick up on the way we say it more than what we're saying. You know, it's like you can say the same thing in two different ways, and you can take it, you, and the person will see the way you're saying it. So it's the mood, the consciousness, and the sincerity in which we're giving the feedback that's very important and if we feel that someone is giving us feedback in an 
inappropriate way, we can politely tell them that um, I'm okay without your feedback, actually. You know, thank you. I appreciate you trying to help, but I'm okay. You know, we can stand up for ourselves sometimes. It's important we do that also. Because if we don't stand up for ourselves, um, we can't we can't just um, we can't then get upset because no one else stood up for us. You know, I often say this to my mom. Um, I say, Mom, she's not you know, at my mom's house right now, but I say, Mom, you can't expect everyone to stand up for you. I can try my best, but you have to learn how to stand up for yourself. You know, and it's important we do that because it's good for us. But do it, but in a nice way, not in a rude way, in a very um, appropriate, nice, um, uh, uh, compassionate way. You know, thank you so much for you trying to help me, but I'm okay. I'm okay. I don't. I don't need to. I don't. I don't. But you know. But thank you. And I have others who are who are helping. Hare Krishna. And that way, that person won't disturb your mind again. But yeah, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Sukhava Mataji. Marad keep Marad says the one who makes others happy. Hare Krishna. <laughs> That's what your name means. So. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Yeah, that really helps. Uh, yeah, it's feedback sandwich is very. Uh, I think we have to learn that um, talent or technique of how to give the feedbacks. Yeah, <laughs> that's very important. How you deliver it. Thank you so much. Um, Daddy, what is any more questions or comments? Okay, Prabhuji, I don't see any more uh, questions or comments. So we'll end the call here. At any, we have reached one hour mark. Thank you so much once again for coming on the call and giving us your um, nice uh, class and nice suggestions and nice tips. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you all dear devotees. Uh, we'll end the call here now. Mancha Kalpataru Tesha. Basin the Bevacha Patitan and Pavane Pio, Vaishnavi Pio Namunama. Shimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Shri Prabhupad Ki Jai, Maharaj Ki Jai. Thank you so much. Kajrabji Prabhuji Ki Jai. Thank you.